the cusp of a, an important moment in Kenya's history. More importantly uh, for today's event, we don't want to overdo the, the messaging that has come out from the principal focus of uh, humanitarian issues in our government, but we'd like to stress the following. We live in a very difficult neighborhood, and over the past four or five decades, we have been in the brunt of a series of ever-evolving and mutating humanitarian challenges. I remember one of the first jobs I did as a Foreign Service officer when I was hired in 1983 was to go to a place called Dadab. Well, of course, we know the camp was formed, established in 91. But I do recall one of the things that we're looking at at that time was this incredible challenge that, that faced our great country. But the other thing, of course, is when around the same time, those of us who went to school in the 60s and 70s, a lot of us were probably educated by Ugandan refugees. And I would put it to you that a lot of the, the wealth, the knowledge, the expertise that a lot, some of us have is a direct result of this group of people called Ugandan refugees. The world has changed incredibly since then, and the humanitarian challenges have continued to mutate. And against this backdrop of continuously mutating humanitarian challenges with climate change involved in it, we have to be very, very innovative. We have to think differently about our challenges. And we have to be able to present new ways of doing things. Recent images flashing on our screen about people crossing the Mediterranean or crossing into Europe flashed and there's a big outcry when a little boy was swept on the shores of a foreign land somewhere dead. But it's not really the refugees issue. It's uh, it's, it's how we are able to organize our societies. And if in the 50 years some of our countries have been independent, we are not able to organize ourselves better, it's inevitable that the challenge of conflict and the humanitarian reprisals that occur thereafter will continue to occur. So for us in the foreign ministry, we need to first of all deal with these challenges in our neighborhoods, in our countries, to, to insist on a democratic ethos that allows people to express themselves and to live their lives in freedom, that allows them to, to, make, to, to, to make money without um, any difficulties. But when that fails to happen, then we have to come together and help them do it. That is what we're trying to do in the foreign ministry. But also, with what you have started now with this partnership, we assume that we will not, it will not be business as usual, but we'll also not detract or remove the primary responsibility of international organizations to do their part. One of my colleagues, asked, why are you building a permanent house or building in Dadaab? Because when you create permanence, the whole mentality and psychology of, of being in a place is entrenched and people will find it more and more normal to, to be in one place. So, whereas this important launch has occurred. We need to work harder 
collectively to make these challenges a thing of the past. And we should remember that the primary responsibility is reposed in certain agencies and we should always consider continuing to help. I have nothing else to add except to say that we will support, we will work with you, we will follow the lead in terms of managing humanitarian challenges. We have impressive expertise, but we also have to work hard to make our environment where we live and work within Eastern Africa in particular, which is our neighborhood, a safer place to live in. With those few remarks, let me, on behalf of my two senior women colleagues, um, thank you for allowing me to ruminate without any structure and to congratulate you for this important platform which you just launched and to assure you that as a foreign ministry of the Republic of Kenya, we are behind.